Earlier this week, a documentary was released in The Guardian called If I Die on Mars. It's since been seen over 500,000 times across all platforms. But what I want to do today is to give you my own personal verdict on what I think it did well, what could have been improved, to clear up any potential misconceptions about my own involvement and why I signed up to Mars One, and finally to give you an insider look on behind the scenes what went on during some of the filming. Firstly, just the title. It sounds so morbid and pessimistic. I signed up to this mission not because I'm running away from life on Earth. My life here on Earth is great and I'm loving it. Dying on Mars is not the point. What matters is that I want to live on Mars. I want to be the eyes and ears of those scientists back on Earth who can't go themselves. I want to talk to school children back on Earth to let them know what it's like to live and work on another planet. That opportunity is so fantastic, that thought so exhilarating, that I'm willing to go on this mission to make it a reality. Now some people have pointed out, and rightly so, that the ninth digit of pi, a 3, was actually missing in the film. Now this was caused by a cutting error between two of the scenes, it takes place during a transition, and probably not helped by my me actually saying it very very fast, and the producer has confirmed this on his Twitter feed that you can go check, so yes I do know my pi, I did say it correctly. But why was I saying pi? It wasn't to be pretentious or anything like that. The point was, I was asked to demonstrate what traits I had that would make me be a good Good candidate for this mission and in particular I was asked to prove that I have a good long-term memory so that's why I was reciting pi. You might have also seen for example I'm wondering about that classroom scene that I was in so that was me teaching some first year physics undergraduates here at the University of Oxford some basic orbital mechanics I was deriving basically the velocity boost that you need to provide a rocket in order to transition between Earth's orbit to Mars's orbit. I was quite surprised by the borderline obsession with sex in the documentary. But since it came up, I just want to clarify something. Some people are sexually attracted to women, some people to men, and a few people to neither. Now it's not particularly common, it's about 1% in the population, but some people like me just don't feel any urge. Now that being said, that doesn't mean that I don't feel love, for example. I love the concept of romance, of going out of your way to show affection for someone that you care deeply about. And I've certainly felt the feeling. Now the way the documentary presented me, it made me sound all depressed, like I'm suffering and hanging on childhood trauma or something like that. But that was completely out of context. So I was asked how I knew that I would be able to cope psychologically with the stresses and strains that this mission would present. So I proceeded to list a number of various personal events that happened throughout my life and how by going through them and overcoming them, I'd become a stronger person and how after having some of these events happen, having never suffered from any kind of mental condition, it's demonstrated my resolve and my determination and that's exactly what we need to be able to prove that we can do this mission. On a lighter note, one of the most frequent comments that I read was, ah, Sheldon's real. <laughs> now he is certainly my favourite character in the Big Bang Theory and so in some respects I do take that as a compliment, but I don't particularly go round and knock on doors three times before I enter or generally go round being condescending or anything, but uh, I certainly found that very amusing. Now my favourite scene in the documentary was the aqueduct scene, where the sun is setting over the aqueduct as I look into the distance. But what you might not realise is that I had to run through a swamp to get there in time just before the sun set. And so I was coated in mud and I was wet and everything like that. Um, so I was just trying to keep a straight face effectively while we were filming that, just trying to stare off looking all determined and everything whilst gradually sinking down into the swamp. Uh, but still that was a great scene and I really think it did capture my desire and passion for leaving a legacy for those behind on Earth. Finally I just wanted to say that I really enjoyed working with Stateless Media to produce this and though I don't agree with all their creative decisions, I really quite enjoyed the documentary as a whole. In particular, how it showed the incredible diversity and cross-section of humanity represented in the Mars One candidates. Now I hope this video cleared some things up and let me know what you think. Just send me a message in the comments below and be sure to keep an eye out because on February 16th Mars One will be announcing the final 100 candidates in the selection process. So until then, wish me luck!